Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm the co-host and the noob. My name is Caliban, and I'm ready for the trifecta. <laughs> what? I, I want to hear more about this. We'll, we'll get to it. Okay. And we're a couple of magical people ready to moon crystal power make up this episode. Sailor Noob is brought to you by a baby Loch Ness monster. Today we are talking about episode number 67. Umiyo, Shimayo, Bankasuyo, Senshi no Kyusoku in Japanese, The Beach, The Island, and a Vacation, The Guardian's Break, the English translation, and no English title as it was not included in the Deke dub. No, that's the trifecta! I got it. It's an episode where they go to a beach and it has nothing to do with the story. Yes. And it's Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. Yes. And it was also not included in the dub. Yes. Which, like episode boy, that was 20. like coming hot and fast in uh, the early part of the series, but mm -hmm. maybe in the middle part of the series, they're like, oh no, we need all these episodes. <laughs> we have syndication numbers to hit. Well, uh, I don't know. Just, uh, just say, uh, you know, everything's fine. You actually, you um, made me think about it. And um, this is actually a about in the same place um, for season two, because that was episode 20 of season one. And this is episode 67 and season one ended on episode 46. So this is just 21 episodes from the end of season one finale. Okay. So it's, it's like 21 episodes instead of 20 episodes into the season. I feel like there's, if we got somebody who worked for, for Toei, on mm -hmm. or something like that. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, we all take our summer break then. That's our summer break. <clears throat> then we, give yeah. it, we just give it to the interns and go, yeah, let's write something. It doesn't matter. Anyway, but... It, Beach. Right, bikinis. But, but it has to be Yukio. <laughs> yeah, that has, has to, to be the title. It has to have oh, ah, exclamations and Take it for like a walk. That. Just yeah. do whatever you want. Right, exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's what we got. That's what we got. For this episode. Yeah. Oh, man, Last time, wait. it was a pension full of... Monsters. Well, it's kind of monsters this time, too. Kind of. But we don't want to, uh, you know, give it away before we get into it. Yeah. But before true. we get into it, yes. we should talk about our Patreon. Yes. And our new patron. Yes. Who has signed up with us. Uh, Hazel has joined our Patreon, the Sailor Noob Patreon, as an outer senshi. So welcome, Hazel. Welcome, Hazel. We appreciate you being on board. And if you would like to join our uh, crew, our, our, our team, our team. I feel like the girls didn't don't roll up in a uh, Escalade and you know as a crew <laughs> jump out. No, although these I are could, not. Uh, I mean, these these are teams with attitude, but it's not quite the same. I could as being see, a Power Ranger. Somehow, I could see Minako like like uh, coordinating oh, okay. uh, something like that. Interesting. I don't know. She's lived abroad. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where any of this is going, except to say that uh, you can join our crew with attitude by going to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Sailor Noob and joining up. We have an entirely different podcast that uh, has taken some twists and turns recently. Yes. But uh, it's still fun to do, called Anime Edification. And anime I Edification. Messed it up. I already messed it up. It's, it's I okay. I don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've got that. We've got uh, outtakes from this show and other special content. Yes. Uh, join us. Join us on the Patreon. I just meant that, like, you know, Minako wants to be an idol. So I thought that maybe <laughs> she would, like, have, like, ideas of, like, how I just think to... I'm just thinking of crew. I've been watching a lot of Sopranos lately. And oh, so when I think okay. of crew, I'll, like, they'll jump out of a, out of a four, four by four. Okay. They've got, like, lead pipes. You know, they're doing that thing where you hit it against your hand, which is like, ow, 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 ow. Yeah. That's what Usagi would do. Yeah. I, I guess I was thinking of, like... Wearing a lot of gold jewelry. I, I was thinking of, like, you know, them wearing, like, cool, like, athletic wear or yeah, something right, like exactly. that. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Right, no, you, you got it. Oh. Track suit. Yeah, I was not picturing the lead <laughs> pipes, though. Uh, well, gangsters so anyways, love track suits. I mean, if yeah. you, I guess you got to be comfortable. Right. The gangsters are probably looking at uh, people's fashion choices during the pandemic and being like, uh, what is this? <laughs> Look at these uh, Stugats. 
All this wearing, athleisure. Wearing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> athleisure, Tony. That's where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they have a, a side business that's all athleisure. Uh, right. <laughs> Well, I'm feeling kind of like Tony Soprano because I feel kind of salty. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure how I feel about this episode. Because this is at the sea? Well, (laughs) all right. (laughs) Who's doing the jokes here? But the point is, is that um, forgive me uh, for for what I'm about to do. Okay. To to mangle uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Make me nice, but not yet. Okay. Well, speaking of Tony Soprano, who's a father figure, uh, there's another father figure who, uh, unlike Tony Soprano, disappears from the middle of the show. I know. I, you didn't tell me that last episode was Mr. Sakino's final episode. He's just sitting there on the couch. Don't stop believing. And then it just cuts to black. What happens to him? We never find out. I Okay, so I didn't say anything because I thought it would be considered a spoiler. But now I know well, that I need to say what, something. There's nothing to spoil. <laughs> Surprise! It's his last episode. I didn't then remember he's just that. Gone. I know. I didn't remember that him not being in it anymore. And so I was kind of surprised by that, too. And I'm upset. Um, I, 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 oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's, uh, stick with me here, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't, um, don't, um, cancel your, your Patreon just yet. Oh my goodness. Uh, I I thought that we were doing a thing where we're looking, you know, in a funny way with superheroes, but at the life of a 14 year old. Yes, we are. Your, your parents are important and your, and your father as a father figure is important. Yes. At that point in your life, right? I would agree with you. Not anymore. He's just gone. I know. (laughs) I mean, to be fair, he did nothing for like 30 episodes straight. Mm -hmm. There was really only one episode I could think of where he was important, where she goes to the, the ball with the diamond kingdom princess or whatever. Um, yes. But otherwise, like he's not, we were having fun, but Usagi, I trust you. Yes. we're, We're having fun with that stuff. All that fun's over. I, I'm I'm really disappointed. I I do think that like a lot of his most memorable parts in the show had to do with him de- like you're saying dealing with the fact that he has a teenage daughter who might be interested in dating boys and that terrifies him. And you know, like when he meets Mamoru, he freaks out. No, you're just describing what his character is. I'm just saying his character will never be more than that because I know. he's gone. I just I, find yeah, that yes. disappointing. It is disappointing. And to be fair, like like I stated before, I don't think that the show is really going down that road. I don't think they're too worried about that aspect of a teenage girl's life. But I thought that there was something to mine there, but apparently not. <laughs> apparently, the creators disagree. Yeah, I don't. Do you think it's just it's because she's a she's a girl, and like they they for some reason they thought that like um a a a girl's relationship to her dad is not as important as a guy's relationship to their dad. She's just a girl. Uh, please don't. That's um, all that you'll let her be. Yeah, I know. Uh, so anyway, that's just, I was thinking about that and it yes. got me a little salty. All right. Um, would you like to give us a synopsis of the show? Sure. We open on Tokyo and forget sideways sun rays. Now the sun is beating directly down. It's the middle of summer. It's hot. Yes. Usagi, Makoto, and Monaco are climbing the stairs to Hakawa Shrine to try and escape the heat. And they're talking about summer break homework and how each year summer seems to get shorter. That's not going to stop, girls. I'll warn you right now. <laughs> they get to the top of the stairs and they find a little shade under a tree and they see Chibiusa there with mm-hmm. Luna P. And Chibi says, oh, I-, I came up here to play with Ray, but she she left a train on an isolated island. And Usagi thinks, an isolated island with a private beach? Yeah. I believed in her. Uh-huh. I trusted you, Ray. <laughs> All right, everybody, pack your bags. We're going to have beach fun, too. I got some questions. Okay. Where is this island? A. B. Private? Who who owns who owns the island? I, C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How can it – is there some manga wisdom here about who owns this island? No. <laughs> C. How can a six-year-old give them directions? Go to any six-year-old <laughs> and – Okay, don't do this, but a hypothetical situation where you ask a six-year-old where they live, you're not going to end up at that kid's house. Yeah, right. D, how did they get there? No clue. And E, who's 
who's paying for all this? I don't know. Ami's the rich one, right? Maybe they there's a there's a scene, a deleted scene where they had to convince her, like they're, they're gonna study the whole time. This is gonna be really great. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that went <laughs> so over. So Ami's like, all right. Real well. I'll get my mom's black card. Yeah, right. Like she would get her mom's credit card out. I don't see her doing that. On the island, Ray is actually training. She's standing in the surf in her Miko uniform. She begins chanting the Kujian. She gets, I don't know, Fuda. I just noticed before that the Ofuda is kind of like, you know, floppy paper. And then when she gets to the end of the thing, it goes, and like it's. Yeah, right. It like sticks up. Right. (laughs) I shouldn't have (laughs) said that. For lack of a better word. Uh, And she leaps up to do something really cool. Just as she does that, we hear, Richard! And she falls on her face. Yes. It's the whole gang. Yeah. Plus a six year old with no parental supervision. I know. Yeah. Woo! There's actually a woo. There's like it doesn't even sound like a girl's voice. It just sounds like somebody goes. Let's have a break. Woo! Later, Ray and the gang are chilling at their bungalow with coconut drinks, loving the ambiance of the island. Yes. Ray tells them, "Okay, all right, but look, I'm here for meditation and training." And Usagi says, "Ah, oh, but we came here because Chibi Uso wanted to see you." She puts her hands over Chibi's mouth. The Chibi's like, woo, woo, woo. "I know." Uh, all through this, and really through the entire episode also, uh, Ami is making her usual comments about how great this place is for studying, and did everybody do their homework, and stuff like that. So we'll just consider those acknowledged, yes. and not mention them again. Right. Ray says, well, <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do, but we can play later. But the girls are like, would that be working on your tan? Because behind her, Artie and Luna have retrieved her swimsuit from the, sw- from the suitcase. Yes. And she's like, that's for a break. And Usagi <laughs> says, the beach. Let's go. <laughs> Everybody changes and runs into the water. The beach sounds pretty good right about now. The beach does sound pretty good. Just thinking yeah. about how long it's been since I've been on a beach. It's been a really long time since I've been to one. Um yeah, you can, how, nice can, you can go to one? <laughs> what do you mean? You burst into flames. All right. <clears throat> I'm very pale, but that, uh, yeah. Ray says, don't go out too far. They're sharks, which would seem like a pretty good reason to maybe just work on your suntan instead. Yeah, right. Wait, was she attacking the sharks before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> be gone, evil fish. <laughs> Despite <laughs> despite the real threat of sharks, which has been established, yes. everyone, including the six-year-old, are enjoying a swim. Usagi starts splashing Chibiusa, but Ray arrives with Niagara Attack, and they splash her back. And yeah. cue the montage. We're lounging in the sun. We're doing homework. We're catching yes. fish. We're playing volleyball. To Top Gun's music's playing. <laughs> Chibi and Ray are making a sandcastle together, and the girls think, wow, they really get along. And Usagi says, it's because they're both mean. You can't let one good thing go by, can you? I know. You have to get in there. I know. Chibi and Ray are working on a new castle that has a hole in it, and I'm not even sure how that works. I, it would collapse, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. It must but be really wet sand. Chibi looks through the hole and sees something, something strange. Mm-hmm. When she looks again, it's gone. Everybody goes to eat. Mako has made everybody a lot of seafood, but Chibi's not eating anything. She says she doesn't like fish. Mm-hmm. And Ray says, you haven't even tried it. And she yells, I hate fish and I hate Ray. I'm <laughs> out of here. I know. She, she goes the out fish on the swimming <laughs> or floating on her own. Yeah. She's six years old. The cats, who, let's face it, why did they come along? I mean, for the fish, at least. But yes. they think it's too hot to eat. So yeah. completely negated. Artie asks, <laughs> uh, hey, where's where's Chibi? But she's nowhere to be found. Mako thinks that she was swept away by the tide. And we cut to where Chibi is. And remember those sharks? Mm-hmm. They're going to be important now. The sharks are circling her floaty. She freaks out and falls into the water and sinks down. She can't swim. It looks bad. But don't worry. A dinosaur sweeps her up and swims away with her on its back. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. What is this, Dragon Ball? Yeah. A lot of help you were, Luna P. <laughs> Meanwhile, the girls have found a boat somewhere. And I have no idea. And Mako is driving it. And Usagi says, wow, you can drive this really well. And Mako says, I can do anything. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. The girls are looking everywhere, although it must be said they haven't tried that huge volcano island right next door just yet. <laughs> no. Ray is trying to feel Chibi Usa's presence, but she's found nothing yet. Wait, is Ray just full blown Jean Grey psychic now? It's they're 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 unclear about <laughs> does she, that. Does Ray have X Men powers? Um, I have a I feeling that this episode is going to stretch the boundaries of what we think we know about all the girls' abilities. But yes. just wait for that later. Uh, Ray feels guilty, but Mako says, "No, it's my fault. I made food that she didn't like." 
She really can do everything, including take all the blame and responsibility for everything. I know. I was a little, like, a little what? overbearing this episode. Yeah, well. But you know, I feel the same way. At a cookout. I'm working the grill. Mm-hmm. So I, hey, his burgers will be done. So about about five minutes. How do you want? Hey, Frank. How do you want your burger? Huh? Medium, ah, oh, medium rare. Come on. All right, I'll put that over there. Right, on. right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, how would you know? <laughs> you're good at that. I've experienced that No, but I mean, I'm before. saying, yeah, have you? Yeah. I'm saying that when you, you know, work the grill, it it activates some uh, hunter, uh, I should say gatherer, but I'm saying hunter killer uh, mm. instinct in you where suddenly okay. it's like, I am the provider of the feast. All you right. Know, none of you would have a single cheese dog if it wasn't for me. All right. Yeah, okay. I, I get that. Maybe Mako's got that going on a little bit. Yeah, maybe. I just don't understand why she's like, well, she doesn't like fish. She doesn't like the food that I made for her. So it's... <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. My parents would be like, eat it. And I, and then I would be like... <laughs> oh, no. No. We can talk about the girl's parenting style or lack thereof in a little bit. Yeah. Back to Chibi and her dinosaur friend who are fleeing at top speed to a cave on the volcano island, which... Mm-hmm. Much smoke is coming out of it. That's a great escape location. <laughs> They're being chased by sharks, and one nips the dino on its fin. Yeah. I should say that the dinosaur looks like a, a pleosaur. It looks like, you know, a, I say yes. a dinosaur, the, the swimming dinosaur. We all know the swimming dinosaur. Right. Like there's one swimming dinosaur. <laughs> Only one, one, probably. Alligators yes. are kind of like dinosaurs. Yes. Chibi calls Luna P transform, and Luna P does not become a harpoon gun, but does no. become a propeller. Yes. Which... Helps them outrun the sharks, I guess. Yeah. That works. Uh, if this was Sharknado, uh, Chibi would buzzsaw the sharks with the propeller, but that's something else. Oh, my God. Somebody made it like an R-rated Sailor Moon where they take like the show and like put like blood and <laughs> like swear words in. Are you asking I'd like to say or that. are you saying that they did? Yeah. I oh, yeah. if somebody oh, did that. Oh, I, I don't know. That should I haven't be the next looking for it. thing that the corridor crew guys do. <laughs> they arrive in the cave safe and Chibi has Luna P transform again into a first aid kit, which she uses to dress the dino's wounds. Yes. So, new question. Yeah. What happens to the bandages when Luna P turns back? I've got a lot is of Luna questions P smaller? <laughs> about Luna P. Are, are there pieces missing from Luna P? Do you remember the episode where Amin was going to go study abroad in Germany? Yeah. Uh, Chibiusa is like, has Luna P transform into like a, a treat, like some candy to as a gift for Ami. So does that gift go away? Or does like, <laughs> like what? I don't know what I don't understand. Does the what candy happens. scream when you bite into yeah, it? Yeah, what happens? Yeah, I have I have a lot of thoughts about Luna P. Yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, Chibiusa has EMT training, so she's able to six years old. She's able to fix up the dino. Chibi sees a newly hatched egg and figures that the dino may have imprinted on her because that's something that happens in cartoons. Yes, but she says that you know they should be friends. Sorry, I'm not ready for a son right now. So <laughs> let's be friends, and I'm gonna call you Kieran. You get no say in this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> On the boat, they're still searching. Usagi says, oh, now Chibi's become shark food, which really sets the stakes here. Yeah. They know they're looking for a, a child, a, yes. a, a kindergarten age child yes. in a shark filled sea. Yeah, I know. A six year old girl has been swept out into shark infested waters. Yes. No one can find her. It's a really serious situation. Yeah. So it's weird that they do the following bit. Ray tells Usagi not to give up hope. And she says, look how hard Luna and Artemis are searching. But we cut to the cat's faces, and they're both seasick. I know. Is this the right time for a joke? No. Plus, I wouldn't imagine it would take much to make a cat puke. No, I don't think so. <laughs> they puke on dry land. Yeah, that's so, true. <laughs> just the back of the boat would be full of cat puke. Although they didn't eat anything, so that's fine. Also, uh, yeah. the button on the bed happens when Luna and Artie collapse, and they miss the giant dinosaur head that pops up at the stern of the boat. I know. Back in the cave, Chibi is feeling bad about getting into a fight with Ray and the girls, but it's okay. She's friends with Kieran now. Yeah. Screw them. Right. Chibi says that she's hungry, and Kieran grabs a bunch of fish from the lagoon in the cave, and Chibi thinks, wah, wah, it yeah. can't be helped. Right. And she has Luna P transform again into a hibachi grill. I, yes, I am assuming. And here's a, where they get the grill from. I, it's it Luna P. It has to be Luna P. Yeah. This is a scene... That encapsulates perfectly why a leaderless group of 14-year-olds is not the best search party. We cut back to the boat, and Monaco sees the smoke from Chibi's grill through her binoculars. 
Yeah. And they wonder if it's a sign from Chibi. But Mako, who knows everything, says she thinks the smoke is from the volcano. Uh-huh. And Ray's not getting any psychic hits, so they ignore the smoke! I know! <laughs> I'm, I'm sensing the letter P. Is there a P? Is there a P in the name? And the smell of fish? <laughs> Just leave it to the know it, Captain Know-It-All and the psychic girl. I know. <laughs> Back in the cave, Chibi hesitates before eating one of the cooked fish. And we hear, Kieran only makes the noise, Goopy! I know. Which reminds me of uh, Geshi from Clone High. Uh, definitely look it up. Okay. Candy! <laughs> Candy! <laughs> it does sound very similar. I'm assuming uh, it's an admonishment to Chibi to try the fish. Uh-huh. Try, yeah. the, try the fish. Right. Goopy. Well, he seems to understand her, right? I, don't, like, I guess. She says she's hungry and she he gets her a yeah, bunch of right. fish. Yeah, right. He was hungry, too. I yeah. don't know. Uh, hot grill Luna P says nothing, but if she did, it might be the tortured scream of a cat robot who can only feel the searing heat of what has become her personal hell. <laughs> I might have misjudged Luna P. Yeah. She's a victim. A creepy victim, but a victim all the same. Aww. <laughs> Chibi tries the fish, and of course she loves it. So yeah. thank God that story resolved itself. I know, right? It was like instantaneous, too. Like, she literally takes one bite, and she's like, Oishi! Like I right know. away, <laughs> it's just it like, gets near her mouth, and she's like, "Oh, this is great!" It's, it's almost like, like I wouldn't have to be in a cave on a volcano island with a dinosaur if I had just eaten a bite of fish. It's like Chibi, you said you were being a brat because you like <laughs> didn't even try it. And don't get lost; these idiots are never going to find you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> still, they've got a dowsing rod looking for, <laughs> looking for. Her. Uh, still, still, still the girls search. And as they do, the cats see the silhouette of giant mama dino under the boat. Yeah. So why did they miss it before? I don't know. It's a weird beat to I think it's interrupt supposed... and then come back later. And then it doesn't even pay off. They're no. just like, oh, something's down there. In the cave, Chibi and Kieran are sleeping. They sleep right through a very ominous earthquake on this volcanically active island. Yeah. Chibi wakes up to take a Luna pee. And we have to assume that that situation resolves itself when the gigantic mother dinosaur suddenly appears in the cave. Yes. Chibi's worried, but Kieran smooths the whole thing over, and Mama takes Kieran away, leaving Chibi alone in the cave. Mm-hmm. Or Luna P alone with Chibi. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it doesn't matter, because Kieran immediately swims back to Chibi. Yeah. Just then, the volcano decides to erupt, and the cave collapses on them. Mama Dino throws herself over Chibi and Kieran. The girls see this eruption... And then Ray says, uh, Chibi's at the volcano. Yeah. Can you only sense like strong near death emotions Apparently. or something like that? You were Literally. asking if she was like Jean Grey. Maybe, maybe not yet. You know? Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> oh my God, a dinosaur's in trouble. Uh, so she's over there. <laughs> maybe she sensed Luna P. What? This is too much. <laughs> this what? is the last straw. This is my personal hell. I'm going to die as a grill. <laughs> Or as a weighted blanket. Or whatever she turned into when they were sleeping. Luna says, everybody transform. We're going to try out your powers against natural disasters. I know. We get a giant five-way transformation, which is cool, but also eats a clean two minutes off of the episode. Yes. The girl's boat speeds to the cave where Chibi is able to drag herself out of the rocks. But Mama and Kieran are trapped, even though Kieran's about the size of Chibi. And the rocks yes. are still coming down. Chibi realizes that Mama Dino was trying to get them away, but uh -huh. she screwed that up for them. Yep. If the girls had just never come here, everything would have been fine. Yeah, probably. Although she wouldn't know she likes fish. <laughs> that, yes. The volcano the eruption is picking up and lava is flowing down the mountain. It looks bad. But the sailor Senshi are here. Ever wonder what a Venus love me chain would do to molten lava? Now's the time to find out. Yep. Ray hits the lava with a burning mandala, which slows it down. And yes. Jupiter uses sparkling <laughs> wide pressure to create a crevice which further slows the lava, and Venus's chain drags a giant boulder in front of the path of the lava. Mm -hmm. I've said lava more than I expected to for a Sailor Moon episode. <laughs> now it's down to Mercury to use Shine Aqua Illusion to counter the lava. It's super effective. It is. Chibi asks the sailor to save Kieran and Mama, and Sailor Moon blasts the rocks with a Moon Princess Halation, which destroys rocks? They were evil rocks, <laughs> I guess. And Kieran and Mama <laughs> swim away from the lava just in time. They were evil because they were going to kill Kieran and Mama. So that's why they could just, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this, you would think that this, the lava head's right for them. And I know that when you're dealing with like, you know, a kind of quickly produced, cheaply made uh, cartoon, 
uh, that's in you know 2D animation. Yeah. Um, sometimes you take shortcuts, but there's just like a river of lava heading right for the cave. I know. And you know, if there's like an, an, a depression or something in the in the mountain, you think lava would be coming down from all around. But yes, it's absolutely. just a highway of lava headed right for them, the highway of hell. <laughs> and so they're able to use their powers to block this just channel of lava. And it's just this one stream. Right. Which, by the way, is heading for a, a cave, an impression in the, in, the, in the outline of the island yes. with a hole in the roof. Yeah. Which wouldn't be burned by lava. If lava had gone through that channel before, there would be no cave here. It would just be full of cold lava. Right. Which we call rock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it just would be solid rock. <laughs> I know the people that created this aren't geologists, but come on, people. This is like Scooby-Doo logic here. <gasps> uh... Everybody's safe. They're headed back on the boat. Chibi asks what happened, and Usagi tells her that the sailor soldiers came and helped them. Yep. <sighs> Chibi waves goodbye to Mama and Kieran. Chibi's sad, but she's yeah. happy that she made a new friend and that he's back with his Mama, mm-hmm. as she may never be. Yes. And, and she, she likes fish now. Yeah, and she tells Ray she likes fish now. <laughs> the, the salt of water is in my veins. I know. Feeling salty. I'm feeling salty too. I this kind of feels like I don't know. Maybe this is a diss to Scooby Doo episodes. It kind of feels like a Scooby Doo episode. It really does. You know, but not. But not a good Scooby-Doo No, episode. not the original Hanna-Barbera ones. Like the no. ones where Sam and Dean guest we're, star. We're just phoning it in Scooby-Doo <laughs> episode is what yeah. it feels like. And not as good as uh, either uh, Scooby-Doo uh, feature film. Um, yes. I, I don't uh, – sometimes you get a show that – you know, and you can look at our numbers – is consistently good or at least solid. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get a show like um, The X-Files or – or even Supernatural or Star Trek or something. Yes. Day in and day out, it's a procedural. We're going to hunt a werewolf. This week, it's a vampire. Right. But then we have an episode where, oh, we're all caught in like a 50s TV reality. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Oh, he's got a big sandwich. Oh, ho, ho. Right. Uh, and people remember that. And they or like the Buffy episode where they all sing. That is consistently so in people. like the top five yeah. Buffy episodes right. ever. And it is not representative of the series at all. No. If anything, if we get nothing else out of our work on Sailor Noob, we have proven conclusively, scientifically, that the show should just stick to doing what it does best. I agree with you. Whenever they do these, they don't work. No. And do these leave you going, why did any of that happen? Yep. This is, um, I mean, I maybe I should leave it for my rating, but this is, I completely understand why Dee cut this out. It's cute, I guess. But like, it's but, oh, com- oh, you're it's, you're, you're it's, attributing uh, artistic integrity to Deke. I and mean, this is just like another half an hour that they could put on Cartoon Network. Like, why would they care? But I just mean this doesn't like add anything to the story. No, absolutely not. But we all. all we do is is just crap on Deke. Yeah, it works. And uh, and you're in this case, you're like, oh, good good decision, Deke. Cut this out. Like, I don't think they really care what's happening okay for, but, for 22 minutes of a but, sailor moon episode okay but why did they cut the the other episode like this in season one and because it's child endangerment and it's also just weird well it is off-putting. child endangerment that's true but like and the other one from that the... episode we discover that you know psychic i mean raised psychic i guess uh i don't remember her doing a lot of psychic stuff in that episode she didn't like bond with the kid right it was a me that was it was a me who bonded with the kid um but so we know psychics are real Mm-hmm. Assuming that the people that worked at the at the pension <laughs> were yes. just wearing costumes and weren't actual vampires and werewolves, we're not sure. Uh, and now we know that Loch Ness monsters are real. Yes, <laughs> I just don't like. I didn't. I, I never asked for this. Sailor Moon, stop. I know. <laughs> stop giving me these. Are things. we gonna have it? We're not probably. But are we gonna have like an? I just imagine an episode where all of these random characters. Who are not even back? who are not even like Yoma or monster, you know, monsters. Like the, yeah, be like the finale of Quantum Leap, yeah. where all the all the characters come back, but they're playing different people. Is that what happened? Well, I spoilers for the I end of Quantum Leap. Gosh, I don't remember that at all. Okay, wow. Um, so I was going to talk about why Chibiusa names um the the dinosaur or the Loch Ness monster uh, Kieran. Uh, she says, quote, you have a long neck, so I'll call you Kieran, okay? 
Uh, meaning, so so Kirin is, is the Japanese form of Chilin, which is Chinese, and Kirin is um, so Chilin um, is a mythical hooved chimerical creature known in Chinese and other East Asian cultures said to appear with the imminent arrival of the passing of a sage or illustrious ruler. <laughs> but... Hey, what's um, up? Is he, is he dead yet? <laughs> right. I'm just wait so, here. But it, so it's Kirin in Japanese, but Kirin is also the uh, Japanese word for giraffe. So I think that oh. that's why she named him... Kieran is because um, he, he has a long neck like a giraffe. Okay. Um, but so the Kieran in Japanese art tends to depict um, uh, the Kieran as more like a, a deer like than in Chinese art. And alternatively, it is depicted as a dragon shaped like a deer, but with an ox's tail instead of a lion's tail. Uh, and they are also often portrayed as partially unicorn-like in appearance, uh, but with a backwards curving horn. And you may know the Kirin Brewing Com- Brewery Company uh, is a Japanese brewery company which has a Kirin uh, featured on its logo. And the CEO's a really long neck. Too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Gotta wear two neckties. Uh, and in order for the <laughs> in order for the brewery to come into existence, a sage had to pass away. So you know what? I don't know. It put me in mind of the Celtic water horse or the Kelpie. Oh, okay. Which is a Celtic myth about a horse that lives in water. And, uh, okay, it's like a hooved water creature. I feel like that must have been. On... No, it wasn't. They definitely weren't thinking about that. No, but it must have been on been on like My Little Pony. Or something like that. Oh, like the, the sea ponies. Yeah. There I had a sea pony what? when I was growing up. It was a it was a my little pony, but the bottom part was like a seahorse. Oh and you, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear it came with like a little this is so weird. It came with like a little alligator floaty and like you could take it in the bath with you. Like it was a cute pink and green alligator uh uh tube that sure. you you put on the your little my little pony seahorse yeah. yeah. and it floats in the bath. So anyway. Yeah. It's it it's also kind of like the the kappa. Yes. Yes, which we will talk more about oh. later. Oh, wow, it's almost like everything's connected thematically I, throughout the episode. Yeah, I know. Imagine that. <laughs> Would you um speaking of connections and making them would you like is that gonna work i don't know isn't I, it i don't know <laughs> you won't know until you finish um it. would i was thinking maybe it'd be a good time for you to give your predictions on where you think oh man we haven't done that in a while yeah um Where's where the show i going? think this is going yeah uh maybe it's a good time because we've hit a certain point of stoppage <laughs> in the regular flow of the story <laughs> because it was summertime and right you, 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 you. <laughs> so maybe it would be a good a good time um i you know it's it's really hard to know um yeah i can't remember the last time that we did this and i don't remember if i was right about what was going to happen with alan on or not i don't even remember if you did one with Alan. Well, on. I did a couple. Okay. We're not very good at tracking this. Yeah, I know. Maybe we should get better at it. Yeah. Um, this kind of relates to something that I was going to bring up before, which is Usagi hasn't done much to get Mamoru back. <laughs> and I know that, like, the way that yeah, episodic TV, especially cartoons, go is they'll just suddenly remember that when it's time to mm-hmm. to finish that up. Mm-hmm. Um, bad example, you know, Samurai Shampoo. She's looking for the samurai that smells like sunflowers right and they have all kinds of crazy adventures and never mention sunflowers yeah until it's time to wrap up the series and mm-hmm. then we find the guy that smells like sunflowers um and so yeah i mean she hasn't done much with that but i assume that we will do something with that eventually it was two it was twofold as well it was i want to get mamoru back yes but also i'm going to become stronger which is yes. to say i'm guessing i'm going to improve myself as a person so that he will want me back Yes. She's not going to like try to lift a car or something like that. No, I don't think that's what she yeah. meant. Yes. So I assume that that's going to happen. Yes. Um, at some point. Um, I think that we're going to get more twisted up with the um, Ayakashi sisters. Because mm. at this point, we've been de- developing them 
we, we keep having the girls not exactly fight them, but be like, these guys are weird. Like, they know about us, the good guys. Yes. The good guys are now learning about them. Yes. It's kind of reflective of the Dark Kingdom a little bit. It is. And at some point, we're going to, you know, we're going to have to get these guys together. Right. Um, I don't want to go so far as to, like, guess, because I was right with Ale and Anne that they would turn good. Or yes. at least they, we would understand them. I don't want to go so far as to that. They seem pretty bad. But I think that we will, you know, there will be actual, like, exchanges between them at some point. Um, what else? I mean, that all makes sense to me. Um, that's all I can really think of. Okay, that's uh, fine. And then I, I and then here's a little <laughs> cheat. I did cheat a little bit. Uh oh, wasn't my fault. But I I know now that the thing that the Ayakashi have is is referred to as the UFO. So the girls are going to get like we'll probably get abducted by the UFO at some point. And like for me, that's like you. Know, Oh here! Oh, so, oh, and then the other predictions. Yeah, they're they're definitely from the future. They're, mm-hmm. It's a it's a reverse Terminator where they're coming back and trying to do something bad instead of good. Um, but it's we just did aliens. <laughs> we literally just did aliens. So why would you have these other guys who aren't aliens necessarily, but mm-hmm. they have like alien iconography? Like you had your chance to do that with Alien on okay. Alien. Yeah, and Luna P will definitely um, go on a on a rampage. <laughs> she is just gonna snap. Luna P's gonna snap. Gonna I don't learn. want it. I don't want to be a grill. She's gonna learn. I don't how want to be candy. <laughs> I'm gonna be a grill. I'm gonna <laughs> grill your face. Uh, she's gonna learn her own transformation word or something like that. She'll be able to like Aww. transform into. I really want that for Luna P. I do. <laughs> like I want Luna P to have like an arc. Like let's give Luna P an arc. Uh, let's make Luna P an arc welder. <laughs> She'll set people on fire. Oh my goodness. Oh, and um, definitely, uh, will, Kieran will um, uh, replace uh, Miss Aruna as their teacher. <laughs> well, funny, like, oh, did you hear about the new teacher? Oh, here comes, here comes Sensei. Yeah. Goopy! Oh my God! It's funny that you should. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm late. Goopy! Okay, I'll put the bucket on my head. <laughs> it's funny that you should mention Haruna Sensei because I was gonna say earlier. No. I... Episode 58 is the last episode we saw Haruna Sensei. She's gone too? She's gone too. What? <laughs> I, I know. So the second to last episode yeah, okay, with look. Ale and Han. All right. All right. So the disconnecting love, Here's the Jesus. raging Mackay tree. Here yeah. he is. Yeah. What am I doing? You, I'm come at you. me. Come at me, Jesus. Come at me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Captain Kirk? <laughs> yes. God, me with a knuckle sandwich. No, I'm telling you to come to Jesus. From now on, it's not a spoiler to tell me that a character has now disappeared forever from the show. I, I got that now. You, I mean, you, you came yeah, I to guess me you about did, Kenji I guess you Tsukino. did get me with me making a joke prediction about a character that was wrong because she's not in the show anymore. But it, that doesn't matter. You can tell You can tell us when a character has left the show. I, I know now. I can't now. believe. I know. They're taking all the adults out of the show. I know. It's, it's, it's upsetting. Um, I was upset about that, too, because I'm like, Haruna says. I feel like, you know, we don't talk much about the end game because we're kind of, we're not even halfway there yet. You know, we're still enjoying it. But yes. this, this feels like a red flag to me. This feels mm. like, and this doesn't even make any sense because, like I said, we're not even halfway through. But, like, you know, when your dog jumps up on your bed. Yeah. When you go to bed, you're going to read. And the dog whoop, jumps up there, you know. Like the first time that you, the dog misses the jump. Yeah. The first time I that know. you go, whoop, boom, boom, whoa, Frisky, you okay? Frisky's got, he's got some gray hairs. Yeah. Frisky's not going to be around forever. I know. That's how I feel. Oh, you're getting sad that the show's not going to be no, around forever? No, I'm getting forever? sad that it's going to get bad and we'll have to continue doing this show while the show is bad for the last 40 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm, that was the Frisky metaphor. Okay. All right. Well, Come I. Come at me, Jesus. <laughs>
Backtracking is back for an all-new season. Hi, I'm Caliban. And I'm Gooey Fame. And we'd like to introduce you to Backtracking, the podcast that explores the real-world inspirations behind your favorite episodes of Star Trek. From historical events to classical literature to blockbuster films, we go where no pod has gone before to seek out the origins of classic Trek tales. Did you know, Gooey, that the TNG episode Too Short a Season was an allegory for the Iran-Contra affair? Yeah, only sweatier. Did you know that the Enterprise episode Regeneration was an homage to the John Carpenter film The Thing? Archer and T'Pol freezing to death over a bottle of whiskey would have been a controversial ending. As a dog lover, Archer would not like The Thing, I'm guessing. Oh my god, movie night is cancelled. Join us every other Thursday for a journey back to the beginnings of the Trek universe. Backtracking is available wherever you get your podcasts. No, Porthos! For Kuro Kuro Miro, or Curiously Looking Around, where we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, today we're going to talk about Japanese cryptids. Ooh, now explain yeah. what a cryptid is for anybody who doesn't know. Yes, so I wrote this down according to <laughs> Merriam-Webster Dictionary. No one can see that you wrote it down. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> uh, I typed it down, what have you. A, a cryptid is, quote, an animal such as Sasquatch or Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster that has been claimed to exist, but never proven to exist. Right, and it's like, it's all fake, but like, instead of just like a mythical creature, Right, like people have Selkie, had sightings of you know, it. Or the Kelpie. I said Kelpie before, but they, Kel, Kelpies and Selkies. Same thing. Look, Celtic people are not creative namers. <laughs> um, but like, those are mythological, but this right. is something that's like... Oh, no, it, it could exist. There are grainy photos of it somewhere. There's like a sheen of like science on it. But right. I mean, you can tell how I feel about this right now. But yes. But yeah. So Chibiusa calls Kirin Chan, a, and she calls him Kirin Chan, uh, a dinosaur. But it is also clearly drawn. He's clearly drawn to look like a, a Loch Ness monster. But, but just going off of the way his his legs and fins are drawn, yeah. you know, and with the long neck and et cetera. So, so that's why we're going to take a look at, um, cryptids. And I have a lot here, so I'm going to maybe skip around a little bit. Um, sure. if, if you get bored or something, maybe you can just tell me to go to the next thing. Yeah. Um, if you hear a door open and close, like, you know that that's <laughs> okay. what it was. All right. Did you know that Japan actually has its own Loch Ness monster? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ishii is a Japanese lake monster said to lurk in Lake Ikeda on Kyushu Island. Huh. Uh, and it is described as being uh, like saurian in appearance, so kind of like a dinosaur. Um, the naming convention um, is, uh, you know, an analog of uh, it's like Nessie. Nessie, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's spelled... I S S I E, which you know, it's not really Japanese, but they they make it work. Um, this came after the Loch Ness monster, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, Lake Ikeda is about 15 kilometers in circumference, and at its maximum depth, it's 233 meters. Um, it is the biggest volcanic lake on Kyushu, and it does not connect to the ocean at all. So it's a fully enclosed lake. Um, and according to mythology, Ishii was a, this is, this is the, the myth that goes along with Ishii, uh, was a, a white mare who had a little foal and they lived together on the shore of Lake Ikeda. However, when the foal was kidnapped by a samurai and Ishii was unable to find it, she jumped into the lake and, and, uh, her despair transformed her into a giant Saurian beast, which since then frequently surfaces trying to find her lost child. <laughs> what? Okay. Huh. It's a very elaborate tale for, you know, trying to say there's basically a Loch Ness monster in this lake. You know, so... Yeah, uh, they need Ishii to polish is, that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Ishii is, is white in appearance. Um, and so the creature was reportedly photographed in 1978 by a man who went by the name Mr. Matsubara. 
Uh, 20 other people reportedly also saw the creature in 1978, uh, which they described as, okay, so this, in this description, I've heard Ishii being described as white. In this description, the creature was black, but had two humps, each about five meters or six feet long, uh, and it was swimming in the lake. Hmm. The same year, uh, the tourist office in the area decided to capitalize on this site uh, sighting by building a statue of Ishii by the lake and giving it the nickname Ishii-kun, who has become a local mascot. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, according to the mythological tale, Ishii is a lady who had a baby, but Kun is usually a male suffix so i i don't know you know take what you will from that maybe ishii is um non like had i i don't know like recognizes both genders uh, I yeah don't, i'm not gonna assume anything about, I, i'm about not going ishii. to is, assume anything either but uh ishii kun apparently they've decided this creature wants to be called so <laughs> Well, this might be a freshwater lake, but I'm still salty. You are. This seems this seems just really commercialized, and do you it know is what I mean? a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying that people don't like make money off of the Loch Ness monster or Champy or um, or like Roswell. You know, like oh, oh uh, the Alien sure. Cafe or whatever. Yeah, but it's just like. Oh, hey, guys, did somebody see a log floating in the lake? Well, let's put up the sign. Let's do this thing. I, I, it is a little bit like that. So, <laughs> but there was, there, in 1991, there was another visitor kind of had a grainy video footage, supposedly, of Ishii. Um, I wonder where we're at vis-a-vis Loch Ness Monster sightings now. Now that everybody has, like, a 4K camera in their pocket. A lot of videos of, like, logs. People going, oh, oh, no. I know, right? <laughs> right? Like, what is that? Exactly. I don't know what that is. Now you can really see the zipper in the Bigfoot suit. <laughs> right. You zoom right in there. Yeah. And you, you, you can totally see it. <laughs> so um, it, it it's possible that this footage uh, could also be of surface swimming six-foot eels as well. Six-foot Seven foot. Because Lake Ikeda is home to giant eels that can grow as long as six feet. Hold on. Hold on. Yep. Lead buried. I know. That's the real cryptid here. Yeah. Six foot long eels? These are real. These are real. Well, then they, it's just they, an eel. They, they they have them. In, I've seen them in tanks. They're freaking long. What about Ely? They're huge. Yeah, I know, right? Where's, where's Ely's money? <laughs> where's Ely's t-shirts? <laughs> no, t-shirts for Ely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, <laughs> there is also, uh, Kushi is a, is a Japanese lake monster said to be living in Hokkaido's Lake Kusharo. Uh, the naming convention was also borrowed from Nessie. So there's another Loch Ness monster. It's just up in Hokkaido. So, um, and Kushi was reportedly seen multiple times in the 1970s as well by more than 30 <laughs> witnesses and Kushi has also become a local mascot. Got a lot of grainy 8 millimeter footage of Kushi out there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my god. I I hate to think that we've infected them with this idea. I mean, you you've told us before about funny stories about the alien lady who's like, "Don't look at this box I'm holding or whatever." Yeah, right. Uh but this so seems, that went way, way, way. This back. seems like a phenomenon where it's just like, what do they got? Nessie, okay, uh, Kushi, Ishi. Let's do that. I know. Like, don't I copy. Mean, don't do that. I think that they just they. Uh, I mean, I think people actually thought that they saw something, but I think that that in Japan they they also maybe it, it goes back to Shintoism and believing. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I'm just gonna say. Meanwhile, like Kappa stocks are way down. The Kappa are like we're not moving any of these teas. Well, I mean, just like believing that there there's a spirit in every living thing, you know, with Shintoism and everything. Like that, especially like yen coins, like five. Oh, you five think it yen, all goes back to coins. capitalism? The the spirit of yeah. Oh, the spirit of mercantilism. Oh my the goodness! Spirit of commercialism. Okay, all right. So, talking about kappa, um, which translates to river child, it's also. <laughs> I, I know. All right, man. I know. Uh, it also it's also it has many different names. Um, it's also known as Kawataro, which is river boy. Uh, 
Komahiki, which is horse puller, because they've been known to supposedly in myth pull or lure an entire horse into the water to drown it. Um, when they, when the first Japanese person heard about or saw footage of a uh, uh, crocodile, were they mm-hmm. like, "Oh, oh crap! It's it's always been true." I, that's a really this good question. This is the question. real deal because it's a, it's a it's a weird thing that lives in the water, mm-hmm. and it will you know if you're an, if an ibex or something and you get too close to the water's edge, bam, it'll pull pulls you, you right in. Down. Yeah, yeah, right, drowned. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know, um, but I should have looked into it. Yeah, right. A capitile. <laughs> capitile is my favorite rapper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, some of these names could maybe be rapper names if when you so so they're also known as Kawatora, which is river tiger, or uh, Suiko, which is water tiger. Um, uh, and it's 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 an amphibious yokai demon or imp found in traditional Japanese folklore. Uh, they are usually depicted as green human-like beings with webbed hands and feet, and a, a beak-like mouth and a turtle-like shell on their back. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has another very distinctive feature is they have a depression or a dish on the top of their head. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> oh, not the dish. The no. depression. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's known as a sara. And it retains water. And if this is damaged or the liquid is lost, either through spilling or drying up, the kappa is severely weakened. It, like, loses all of its power. And um, it could also die really quickly. Um, but what's that water taste like? I can't imagine very good. Mm. Oh my goodness! Weird. Salty kappa Cop- water. Oh my gosh, gross! God, they should sell kappa water, guys. The t-shirts aren't moving anymore. I got you some start ideas selling for them. Water. I got some ideas. And everybody, for them. tip your heads over. Come on. Because <laughs> uh, speaking of the kappa, are known to like cucumbers. Uh, Wait, we talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, so they love cucumbers and they also like – another thing that they really like is uh, doing sumo wrestling. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. I was going to say they're like the opposite of cats because they live in water. They love it. They yeah. have a hard shell, which cats don't. Yes. And they love cucumbers and cats hate cucumbers. Well, But yeah. they both love sumo wrestling. <laughs> So they, they do. They have a point of they have of something in common there. Yeah. Yes, and they are often of, accused of assaulting humans in water and removing a mythical organ called the um, Shiri Kodama from their victim's anus. Back up for a second. Mm-hmm. You're saying that humans have this mythical organ, yes. in their anus. Can you live yes. a full life without? That, that no, organ? it contain the 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 kappa believe that this mythical organ contains humans' souls. Hold on, kappa believe. So really, it's a question of well, education. If we can just explain to these kappa that our souls are not in our butts, maybe they'll leave us alone. I know. I love that. I, I love the multiple layers of ignorance here. It's like a fake creature. Who has a belief that there's a that's an, or, an organ in somebody's butt that has their soul. <laughs> Well, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said like belief. They're just, they're just but grabbing polyps. I, I, like, I got yeah. it. Oh my god, no! <laughs> that that's an X Files thing. You've got a there, yes. there was actually a creature that went in somebody's butt, but like you've got a yes guy that like you know a, a a thing that is going Mulder. It, it, it believes that something. No, she wouldn't say that. Scully, Scully, it believes that something's in their butts. <laughs> But it's it's a tragedy because he's just killing people. Yeah, right. Got a great butt collection though. <laughs> Can totally, yes, definitely see that. Uh, Kappa are yokai, but they're also considered to be cryptids for a couple of reasons. First reason is they have had alleged sightings. Uh, there are grainy videos that supposedly show proof of the existence of Kappa. I watched a video that was taken during the 2011 tsunami, and like you were saying earlier, I cannot make out the creature that they are talking about. It just looks like moving water. No, totally. Look. And look over here. What are you talking about? Uh, It is entirely possible that instead of seeing a kappa, a lot of these sightings have actually been of the Japanese giant salamander, or as it's known in Japan, the Osan Sho. Which literally means giant pepperfish. Well, okay, wait a minute. I, I think I've figured what the problem here is. Yeah. 
disillusionment. Mm. They live in a land where they've got giant six foot long eels. They've yeah. got giant pepper fish. They've got raccoons with Salmon huge eaters. balls. Yeah. And they're like, no, but I think like a stupid dinosaur would be kind of cool. I know. <laughs> I know. So these these salamanders can grow up to be uh, five feet or one point five meters and weigh up to fifty five pounds. And it's the uh, the largest wild specimen on record weighed fifty eight pounds and was four point four six feet long. <laughs> Um, what? and it, it is, yeah, it's the, the second largest amphibian in the world, only, uh, smaller than its close relative, the Chinese giant salamander. Uh, the brown and black molted skin of the Osan Shou, uh, camouflages against the bottoms of the streams and rivers that it lives in. Um, it has very small eyes with no eyelids and poor eyesight. Its mouth extends across the width of its head and it can open to the width of its body. Wait, um, okay, but mythical though. No, these these are real. These <laughs> the, the, these giant salamanders are real. Yeah, that's great, but like put a bowl in that turtle's head. Classic. But they're <laughs> they I mean, they eat fish and somebody was asking like they were like, "Well, they might eat a mammal if they saw it right in front of them, but they can't <laughs> see very well." So <laughs> oh, 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 tell it to the judge. Yeah, I know, right? Um, it is so it is entirely aquatic and almost entirely nocturnal. Unlike other salamanders, which lose their gills early in their life cycles, it only breaches its head above the surface to obtain air without venturing out on the water and onto land. Um, so when it gets threatened, it can be kind of aggressive, and it tends to be um aggressive uh during the mating season but when it gets aggressive it can excrete a strong smelling milky substance with an odor resembling a japanese pepper hence its common japanese name giant pepper fish these, so these it, guys get to be pretty big it's like spicy milk yeah it's I a guess. spicy milk yeah right uh so um i hate this i yeah i know <laughs> um i had no idea that that, that those that those guys existed. So uh, it, it, it puts me in the mind of like, is Gamera a kappa? You know, Gamera. I don't know that much about he's Gamera. He's a protector of the children. <laughs> I don't know that much about Gamera. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Godzilla knockoff. Yeah. Uh, and he's a giant turtle. He's a, he's a kaiju, right? Yeah. He's a kaiju. And he, um, he he flies by, he retracts his head and his legs, and then Roman candles <laughs> shoot out of his leg holes, and he spins what? around. I mean, I think he's probably, I'm looking at pictures of him now, I think he's probably inspired, but he doesn't, the, the main thing that I'm not seeing, I mean, he's definitely got the turtle shell and everything. The main thing I'm not seeing besides the, the beak-like mouth is the depression on the top of his head. <laughs> That's the, true. For for water. So maybe there's plausible deniability there. Like, that wasn't an inspired by a kappa. I don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> well, I mean, like, who's going to sue you, the kappa? We established that they have a good business sense, so that's possible. You're going to hear from my lawyer. I know. <laughs> um, so despite all this, and there were some scientific writings and investigations about the kappa in the Edo period, but uh, despite all that, it has not been confirmed whether a kappa actually exists. Really? I know. Wow. Moving on. Um, Ningen is an aquatic humanoid creature reported to inhabit the subaquatic oceans. The word in Japanese uh, means human. The legend surrounding the Ningen began on a forum post on the Japanese online forum site 2 Channel. Okay, but come on. Yeah, which <laughs> yeah, which claims that the members of a whale research ship witnessed the creature as it surfaced near the ship of a uh, Antarctic coast. Uh, since then, there have been numerous sightings of the Ningen with supposed photographs, which have not been confirmed to be true. The Ningen is described as a whale-like creature, uh, but it has anatomical similarities to humans. The creature has a face, and in some stories, it is said to have extremely large limbs and um, arms and hands, um, about 20 to 30 meters long. Uh, it is also said to have a mermaid-like tail. But there are also depictions of the Ningen having long legs and being able to walk on land. You, the pig, 
What? You are underselling this because if you Google it's creepy. N I N G E N, it's yeah. just like it's a like a blob or yes. like a circular body on like two humanish legs. Yes. With like calf muscles and definition. And then its face is just like Squish. <laughs> yeah, it just looks really sad. It looks like it's like two little dots or you know, for eyes and like just a line for a mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the saddest looking it look it looks like what is the the fish called that it's just like a blob? Is it a blob fish? It looks like a blob fish, except it's like white and huge and it's got giant legs. Um What's its yeah. connection to Japanese whaling activity? Well they saw it when they were doing whaling. So they, they it kinda looked like a whale, they thought, but then they they thought they got a closer look at it and it had a human face. So they're like, that's not a whale. Uh, no, it's your guilty conscience. <laughs> I see what you're getting All that whaling. At. Another Japanese cryptid is the Tsuchinoko, uh, literally translating to uh, child of hammer. It is a, a snake-like being. The name uh, Tsuchinoko is prevalent in Western Japan, including Kansai in Shi- Shi- Shikoku. Um, the creature is known as... Uh, Bachi Hebi in northern Japan. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Oh my god! No, he's he's a child of Hammer. <laughs> he's he's my he's my nephew. I know. Hammer's my brother. <laughs> Tsuchinoko are described as being between thirty and eighty centimeters, so twelve to to thirty one inches in length. So not very long. Similar in appearance to a snake, but with the main difference being a central girth that is much wider than its head or tail. And having fangs and venom similar to that of a viper. Some accounts also describe the Tsuchinoko as being able to jump up to one meter or 3.3 feet in distance, followed immediately by a second jump while still in the air. Sounds like a video game character. Can double jump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, got the upgrade. <laughs> I was going to say, I can jump three, uh, three feet or a meter. <laughs> Well, yeah, right. It's, okay, double jump. I understand it. But yeah, I can't double jump. Though. No, I That's can't. That's why either. I can't reach the the coins that are high up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Can it do the? Can it jump and then on the second jump reverse its momentum, and then get to a higher platform? Ooh, that's called a curly muffin. I don't know why. What? I don't know why. I've got questions. Um. So many. Uh, so, But a- according to legend, some Tsuchinoko have the ability to speak and a propensity. <laughs> they say it to me. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. So <laughs> Take this all away. <laughs> and a propensity for lying. And they are also said to have a taste for alcohol. <laughs> I, um, love, I love uh, mythical creatures and cryptids that have human vices. Right? You know? It's, it's weird. Like, yeah. This uh, this is a vampire mouse, but uh, he loves Marlboros. I <laughs> it's just got a real real bad habit. I know. I know. Come into your <laughs> kitchen at night and look around through your drawers. He's got a voice like glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Legend rec- records that it will sometimes swallow its own tail, so it can roll like a wheel, similarly to the oh, snake of okay. American legend. All right. It's so it's uh it's a sonic is what it is. I get yeah, it's like good call. It's a sonic. If Sonic can do the the curly muffin, then then I guess the Tsuchinoko can do that too. I don't think Sonic could double jump. He could bounce off of other creatures. Okay. To get an extra boost. Maybe the Tsuchinoko can bounce off of other Tsuchinoko. Does it like rings? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should test this. That would really be the yeah the defining factor of being a, a Sonic, uh, like a Sonic is a thing. Uh, but the uh, Tsuchinoko um, was a nas- became a national sensation in the 1970s because there were a lot of sightings. So of it's it just then. like here, we yeah. were like into cryptids and stuff, you know, in the 70s. It was really popular, in and the people 70s. were like, "Oh man, something's out there, man." Yeah, that's where that's where the X Files came from because Chris Carter was a surfer dude. And he was like not a chill surfer dude, and he wasn't a bank robbing surfer dude like Point Break. He was like <laughs> a, a surfer dude, but he was also like, I don't know, man. You think that the government, like, you think they really don't have aliens? You think they really don't? Okay, whatever, Chris, fine. We're going to hit the swallow, right? But then somehow, you know, he found his way into writing for TV and producing. And so he made a show that's yeah. all about that. Yeah. And a 
author avatar character of Fox Mulder, who wasn't quite old enough to be like a 70s surfer dude, but he's, right. you know, basically got that mentality. Mm-hmm. Eating sunflower seeds. Scully! <laughs> Isitakimasu with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? Um, a lot of food in this episode. When they get to the isolated island where Ray is training and they get to the villa, um, Usagi mentions that the cookies are delicious. We never see them. Yeah, she just mentions cookies. She hey, just mentions cookies. You, well, I mean, she got, you ate them all. But uh, Probably. you can't just mention cookies on this show and then not and show them. And then cookies. not show them. I know. And then, of course, Chibiusa is also drinking from what looks like a, a coconut with a straw. Um, and there are several other coconuts with straws on the, the table. So I'm assuming every girl has a coconut drink. Uh, later we see Mako fishing by herself. Uh, and then, of course, she grilled by herself. Um, and so she grills some sort of redfish hole on a stick, um, a squid, which is ika in Japanese, uh, clams, looks like a- abalone, and turbo saze, which is a kind of <laughs> sea snail. He's my favorite comic book character. <laughs> like a comic book character turbo saze yes he's uh, a he's a formula one driver yeah right um so it's it's a black shell with a world world horns on it yeah and uh it's a also a marine uh gratropod mollusk in the family uh tubinide Out, outside of japan and south korea it is called turbo cornatus and it is common its common name is the horned turban uh, and in Japan, when you eat it, it is considered a delicacy. Uh, when it is food in Japan, it is just sazae, um, so not turbo. Um, and <laughs> after cooking, the animal can be drawn out of its shell using its um, hard upper column or hard rocky lid to which it is firmly attached. Uh, the acropollum is not edible and must be discarded along with the animal shell after eating. And basically, you take like a long thin metal like somebody i was reading something and somebody was like you can use an ice pick yeah um so maybe you use an ice pick and you um dig it into the the meat uh of the snail and sure. you you pull it out yeah um that's kind of like that's you do that with escargot as well you just have a okay fork yeah. And the connection is you know or it's cooked because they're they're boiled or whatever so it's right. already um, a week, you just pull it out. Right. But it's, sometimes it's tough, and then it goes into somebody else's soup, and you go, oops, and you're Julia Roberts. <laughs> oh, okay. And Pretty Woman. All right, well. Speaking of movies, isn't there a movie called Turbo, where Ryan Reynolds plays a really fast snail? Oh, my gosh. Yes, there is. <laughs> that is insane. It's DreamWorks, though, so it's not, it's totally convergent evolution. They weren't thinking, I mean, it might have been animated in, in the East, but they weren't thinking about that at all. That is so weird, yeah. Because they're only they're only found um, in that part of the world, like um, in basically in in Asia and like surrounding areas. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a racing snail. That is so weird. Um, and then I'm not sure if if this is what Mako did here, but a dish that you can make is saze no uh, tsuboyaki, which is you you cook saze over a grill in its shell, and once it is cooked for a little bit and it starts to bubble, um. You put soy sauce in, and if you want, you can also put sake in, and uh, like over the lid, and then it goes into and cooks the helps cook the snail, uh, so you get a flavor in there, um, and then it, you continue to cook it. Um, you can also eat sazae raw, which is called sazae sashimi. Hmm. So, um, so there you go. That sounds safe. <laughs> Apparently, it is. I watched somebody eat it, so. On a YouTube video. <laughs> um, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, grilled whole fish, mm. uh, too. So grilled fish is called uh, yaki zakana in Japanese. Yaki, again, means grill, and sakana means fish. Grilling is the easiest way of cooking a whole fish in Japanese cuisine. Uh, typically, you sprinkle salt all over the fish and grill it whole on the barbecue, broiler, or grill pan. Uh, grilling a whole fish is considered to be the best way to ma- to maintain the juiciness and bring out the best flavor of the fish. 
Um, and cooking and serving a whole fish in Japan is thought of as being luxurious and abundant. Um, and whole fish are frequently served on celebratory or special occasions. Huh. Um, and, you know, like big whole fish. Right. Um, and then you just pick up the skewer and you just... Well, Take a car- cartoon giant sized bite out of it. Uh, no, and so if you if you grill like a whole big giant like red snapper, for example, very tasty. Yeah, um, it it wouldn't be on just a single skewer. Like you would have, and you would like put the skewers in it in a way so that the fish looks alive when you serve it. <laughs> Like, it looks like it's jumping off of a plate. Take me to the river. Yeah, right. So that's, like, for really big occasions. But you can get a whole uh, grilled fish in a restaurant in Japan. Um, and when they serve it whole, they, they mean the whole thing. So so the head and the fins and the tail. Um, and um, so the, the specific term for whole fish is... Um, Akashiratsuki, which means a fish with a tail and a head attached, and this implies perfection. And the sum, uh, the term suga taiyaki, which means grilled as a whole and can be applied to uh, squid pr- or prawn as well as fish. Okay. Um, and the the whole fish must be served with the head facing to the left on the plate. So the the Japanese believe, and and you have to do some digging as to why, but it's just always served with the the, the head on the plate to you. It, it, the fish is facing to the left, um, and its left eye is up. And the Japanese believe that fish looks its best when its head or eyes are to the left and its tail is to the right. That is why seafood is usually presented that way to diners. It's also how fish are typically packaged and sold in stores. It is possible that this started because of religious beliefs. Now, this is just a theory that some people have thrown out there, but Amaterasu, who is possibly the most important deity in Shintoism, was born from the left eye of her father, Izanagi, while her brothers, uh, Tsukuyomi, was born from the right eye, and Susano was born from his nose. He is the trickster and the gross one, after all, so <laughs> it's that, not God. that fits. Um, What's their favorite rapper? <laughs> what? I don't... Oh, left eye? <laughs> oh, good point. Uh, yeah. Wow. Um so so basically when you you're eating it off the plate this giant fish and you just you're you're eating it just yourself right um so maybe it's not as big but uh basically you cut with your your chopsticks along the spine and then you pull the top part up you eat the flesh uh with your chopsticks from left to right it's very specific <laughs> Then you uh, repeat with the bottom and you pull from the flesh from the spine down, eat left to right. Yeah. You do not flip the fish because that is considered rude. You have to instead uh, remove the spine with the head with your chopsticks. Don't touch the bones. Uh, and you put it on your plate to the top of your plate. Now, when you're eating it and you come across bones, you always put them to the left. But this huge thing of bones, you put to the top of your plate, and then you can continue eating the fish. Um, what if I just want to pick, though? What if I'm not that hungry? <laughs> then, then don't order a What bit. if American Barbarian picks up the fish and flips it over? Like, it's, sir, we need you to leave. <laughs> Probably. Give me that jacket back. Yeah, right. Um, this is all very fascinating, but in this, they're just eating fish on sticks. I know. Like in a Jedi Geki, you know, when the, when the samurai yes. stop to eat, they, they just cook the, they put the sticks over the fire and the and fish I just cook. And I tried finding, yes, and I tried finding information about, like, fish on skewers, and there is some, they're, they're, these, but they're these usually. Are smaller fish, these are like kippers. The, yeah, smaller fish you can find, like, on skewers a lot, and they'll, they'll basically just be grilled, and the, um. The way that you usually um, grill them often is you just put salt everywhere. Yeah. So, um, so this is actually called uh, shio yaki, which translates as uh, salt, which is shio, and again yaki is grilling. Um, it's and um, 
basically after you clean the fish, you sprinkle it with salt and you let it sit for like 20 to 30 minutes. And that gives the fish a nice salty flavor, takes away the fishy odor and allows the fish to still have a great texture to it. Huh. Um, and a little olive oil, <laughs> the prosciutto, and the mozzarella, right. right. and the manicotte. Yeah. Sorry. So, the, sopranos. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and I think it's – Chibi Yusei won't eat – food because she exclaims that she hates fish well she's a little kid she's i i know i i didn't like fish when i was a little kid either but it's I, it's like <laughs> it's like hard to imagine like growing up in a culture where like the main protein is seafood and like not liking that yeah it, look honey like, that'd be really challenging half of our food is fish so that would just be really you better get used to it yeah so what a Japanese parent! Uh, what, what's the, uh, the the Japanese parent line on uh, finish all your fish or no uh, mo- mochi ice cream? Oh boy, I that is a good question. I mean, they're very so. There, there's I don't know specifically about fish, but they are at least kids have been taught, you know, that the to not waste um, rice. They're starving kids in America. Well, I I don't know. But, like, the, <laughs> talking about, like, the entire effort that, you know, like, farmers went through to harvest it. But, like, I was told when I was in Japan that some people believe that there are um, – in every grain of rice, there is a god. And so oh, you're leaving rice on the plate. You're you're not. And who wouldn't want to eat god? <laughs> eat a bunch of little gods, right? Beef up and then – all right, Jesus. <laughs> It's time. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> Villain Gage, we rate a baddie one to five dark stars, five being the most wicked. Of course, there's no baddie this episode. The volcano. Yeah, I right. <laughs> um, instead, I have a handful and just a handful of trivia regarding the Ayakashi sisters and uh, their various different names. So they are known in the Deek dub as the Negamoon sisters because apparently we're still doing uh nega stuff i don't know in the mix manga english translation so that was the first translation uh into english right uh they were the four sisters of deception and in the <laughs> i don't know it's bad pr yeah right uh and in the kodansha re-release of the manga they were the specter sisters a little better um in Nako Takauchi's materials collection, um, this is her collection of sketches for um, for the anime, like saying this is what the characters should look like, that sort of thing. Right. Um, they were titled as the Four Weird Sisters, which okay. um, that almost seems like – what were the witches in um, Shakespeare called? Were the- they – Three weird sisters? Yeah. There's three weird sisters. Right. There's four weird sisters, I guess. Then there's the five weird women of uh, Picasso's uh, La Demoiselle oh, de Davignon. Oh, I didn't even know about that. Interesting. In the ADV or AD Vision Incorporated, um, in 2000 they, and three, they, re- they released the subtitled, quote unquote, uncut dvd set for the first two seasons of sailor moon um they the in the subtitles they were called the four phantom sisters um and they're not ghosts at, at all though n- no um i mean uh, at least like the the nega verse people uh the dark kingdom like hung out underground right there were spooky had spooky monster henchmen and they're like totally not – if they were like the Cyber Sisters or something like that, that would be like a thing. Well, I think it's because Ayakashi is the collective name for yokai that uh, – Well, uh, I, I So suppose. I think that that's – they were like, oh, well, uh, they're ghost-like, but without really looking into what the characters actually were or is this a good name for them sort yeah. of thing. In the manga and original anime, they were born in the following order. It was Pets, Calaveras, Bertier, and Koan. But in the dub, for some reason, they changed their birth order to Koan being first, then Pets, Calaveras, and Bertier. 
I don't know. They decided that the koan seemed to be more like the oldest sister and pets didn't. Well, we haven't seen a lot of koan. No. And so maybe it was trying to mimic the Dark Kingdom in that Kunzite is like the most powerful one or whatever. But he's, he's not around a lot. And yeah. then he like totally just gets bitched out like when he finally does show I up. I know. So, yeah. I mean, maybe there's something to that. Very I don't low know. rating. It- <laughs> Uh, Vertier seems to have more respect for her older siblings than Koan does as well as she refers to Calaveras and Pets as One-sama while Koan does not. And One-sama is big sister. Right. So, um, and fun little thing, uh, the Ayakashi sisters are featured in the Sailor Moon RPG game Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon, another story that came out in 1995. Uh, Cal, just don't Look at this game as it includes aspects that you have not seen yet. Oh, it's going to go find a ROM. I know. Uh, characters and plots from the first three seasons are featured and put through their paces in this game. Um, there's there, there's a lot of like, oh, that didn't happen. What's happening now? Why is this happening? Anyways. Uh, so the, I've, I've seen a couple like Sailor Moon fighting games and they yes. sort of have, um, you know, the normal... Uh, Rank and file soldiers are just, they'll pick a couple different Yoma and yes. palette swap them. Yeah. So it's like, why am I fighting a green Tensi? But it's like, that's not a boss. That's just somebody, you know, you're going right. to fight one of the four dark lords or whatever later. Right. Yeah. And, and like a lot of the characters they don't have that we've putties. seen. What, what are putties? Well, yeah, just putties are like the Power Rangers. The putties are just like the oh, basic soldiers that come out saying. so they can do some Kung Fu stuff. And then later on they'll fight. Goldar or something like that. Right. But they right. don't there aren't really like henchmen. There's just like a you know, one monster for the week. Well, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh so we see many monsters and bad guys that are featured from the anime, including Boxy, who <laughs> is one of the many bosses that you fight. So um Nice. Yes. Um Well oh Boxy yeah. versus Jesus. <laughs> Who would win? <laughs> That'd be a rough one. That would be a rough yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and the King of Kings versus the King of Kings. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come at me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> get a lo- get a lovely punch. Oh, my God. I love it. Um, for Subu or Dubu, where we talk about the most interesting differences between the sub or the dub, of course, this was not featured in the dub. The only thing I'm going to note is uh, this is the only episode from season R that was cut. So, right. Um, so it was just this one. They just um, needed all the all the episodes. They, they did. Except for this one. Yeah, they're like, we can get rid of that. <laughs> uh, so now we are up to our rating. There, I think, are some really great moments. In this episode, like when all the girls and the cats show up on the beach and surprise Ray, even though we have no idea how they got there. Um, I also really like when Ray and Shibusa are playing together on the beach and Usagi says that they get along because they are both mean. (laughs) Um, uh, And I like Mako uh, fishing and grilling fish for everybody um, and... Kieran is cute and makes cute noises. Yeah, this is a cute idea, but just to reiterate what I said before, you know, not, nothing really moves the story forward. Um, and I, and you can completely skip this episode, and you wouldn't miss anything. You know, besides Chibiusa likes fish now, and I don't. We'll see if that comes back. Um, so I'm going to give this episode one out of five roses. <laughs> you just gave it some compliments. I did. I did. I, I'll i give it one without reservation. Okay. Um, it's another uh, – boy, I didn't know I was going to try to communicate so much with my ratings, but I, I'm sending a message here. <laughs> yes. But also because – Do better. <laughs> all the, yeah, but all the things that happen in it that had potential or, or could have been interesting in some way all just falls flat for for various and diverse reasons mm-hmm. um and i don't i i don't know here's something if the girls can stop volcanoes yes <laughs> from killing people then why aren't they like worldwide why aren't they fighting captain planet yeah well okay He's or superman hero. or whatever yeah you know, they, they are like a justice league of teenage girls that yes. could 
you know, affect supernatural, or supernatural uh, natural disasters, supernatural disasters. Um, yeah. You know, I just, I never, I guess I never really thought like, I don't know, would a shine aqua illusion work on a pile of lava? Apparently it does. I, I know it can uh, hit a Yoma real good. Yeah. Um, But I was just kind of assumed that their powers were tied to the type of creatures that they're fighting. But I guess they fight creatures from the, the, the moon or they're from Earth. <laughs> Dark Kingdom's kind of confusing. Uh, it is and then, confusing. And they fight aliens and yeah. they're fighting like, you know, just people who have similar powers to them. And so, I mean, yeah, I guess it works. Mm-hmm. But it all comes off in such a a weird, nonchalant way. Mm-hmm. In a way that isn't like – because this will never happen again. They're not going to fight another volcano. Right. So th- there's not a thing for them to go, oh, man, I hope my – I hope my – I can use my my sparking wide pressure well to do something, and then yeah. they're figuring out like, oh, I can, you know, make a, a chasm that will stop the lava. They're just there to resolve the problem so we can end the episode. Yeah, because it's kind of a throwaway. It really is, and, and that's show why I gave it a one. Does not often throw things away, and so for that reason, yeah, I have to give it a one. I'm I'm kind of mad. I'm mad at you. But I'd show. give the volcano a five. <laughs> Out of Definitely five the volcanoes. toughest foe they've ever faced. Yes, right. <laughs> a literal volcano. Yes. Uh, my English title is Chibiusa's Friendship, Surviving Destruction and Learning to Eat Fish. My, uh, we're, we're sure that <laughs> – what? <laughs> uh, you can't have a sentence be your title. Yeah, um, I know. Is, we're sure that uh, – Goopy. We're sure that uh, little Kieran's a boy, right? Kieran, Kieran Chan. Well, Kuhn, she, Kieran she, Kuhn. Well, she called. You can call a boy a chan. All right. Um, well, then my title is "Son of a Beach." Oh my gosh! <laughs> Next episode, we are talking about episode number sixty-eight, Chibiusa o Mamore, Ju Senshi no Daiki Sen in Japanese. Protect Chibiusa, Clash of the Ten Warriors, the English translation, and the English title "Naughty and Nice." <laughs> the, what that? Wow. <laughs> That was a whiplash. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Naughty and nice. Any any thoughts of that title? <sighs> well, the Ten Warriors sounds sounds interesting. Uh huh. Um, but naughty and nice is it's not like uh, it's summer, so it's not going to be trick or treating at Halloween or something. What, no. what What's the naughty and nice? Uh, hmm. Well, I can't say anything. No, obviously. But um, who do you think that the- sugar and spice and naughty and nice? Well, I was intrigued by the Ten Warriors too, but uh, what do you, what do you, who do you think it could be? The um, Ten Warriors, like terracotta warriors. I don't know. We already did clay guys though we back did. in uh, the Jadeite days. Yeah, um, I don't we were know. An airport. It makes me think of the Ten Rings of the Mandarin. Where are the Ten Rings That's, of the Mandarin? Uh, the Mandarin is a foe of uh, Iron Man. Okay, because I wasn't. I was like, is it? The Mandarin from Iron Man, or, or maybe is it it's something just else? Um, you know the first liners and the backup squad for the California Warriors. Okay, <laughs> or Ten Rings for Sonic. I don't know. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> we talked about Sonic yeah, rings and Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week, and the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor Noob. Goopy.